Happy New Year. We are uh, going to talk about Windows for Workgroups 3.11 today. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to discuss um, one of the operating systems that you either love or you hate. It's not even really an operating system. It's just a graphical shell that runs on top of DOS. That's what Windows originally was. And we're doing it for January because I need some content other than music videos. And since December has passed, it's probably a good time to start talking about Windows 3.1. Windows, so Microsoft Windows started in 1985, Windows version 1.01. Um, it was basically a clone of the Xerox PARC operating system, just like Mac OS was. Except it was Microsoft's version that ran as a graphical shell on top of DOS. Oh, seriously. It's not happy right now. Or is it? Let's reboot it. Anyway, this is a perfect opportunity to keep talking. I might have to reseat my hard drive. Anyway, um... So it started in 1985 as MS-DOS 1.01, um, a graphical shell for DOS. Then you had version 2 where it got complicated, kind of like the Windows whole Windows XP thing, where it said, oh yeah, um, where you had like Windows 2.1, Windows 2.03, Windows 2.86, Windows 3.86. Uh, you've probably seen the uh, horrid commercial with the lady in the uh, spy trench coat with the compact desk pro trying to rap about Windows 2.86. I gotta, I gotta wonder who slipped acid into Microsoft's coffee for those, those some of those commercials. <laughs> the only one funnier was DOS Five. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that 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 man had about the uh, the, the the character of um, the character of Ronald McDonald crossed with um, Daniel Stern's character in the Wet Bandits and Home Alone. <laughs> You're up late at night working on your PC. I'm not working late at night. I'm playing Monkey Island, dude. I got Ultima 6 running. Anyway. Here we go. Windows for Workgroups 3.11. I'm going to give you my honest assessment of Windows for Workgroups 3.11. So, Windows 3.1 started with Windows 3.0 in 1989. Windows 3.0 was the first type to use this interface, which is called the progman.exe, or Program Manager Interface. And yes, I have a very swanky install that runs at 800 by 600 at 16-bit um, high color mode. I have a very, very badass graphics card in this 486, and I'm not afraid to use it. So right here, as you can see, I have a log on. Um, this is Windows for Workgroups 3.11. There are four versions of Windows 3.1 made. Windows 3.1, actually five, but the Chinese version 3.2 is not something worth me discussing. Excuse me, because it wasn't a part of my culture. So you had Windows for Workgroups 3. Well, you had Windows 3.1, which came out in 1992. You had Workgroup equivalent intended for work environments called Windows for Workgroups 3.1, and then you had the 3.11 variants. Those two, Windows 3.11 and Windows for Workgroups 3.11. And Windows for Workgroups, which this one, as it announces proudly right here, welcome to Windows for Workgroups, is the one designed for uh, networks. And this was just when networks were starting to show up in the home and show up in your businesses and show up anywhere. So anyway, just like modern day Windows, you log in by, um, you can log in by pressing, uh, putting in your password and typing enter. And you don't even have to hit control alt delete. And you obviously didn't have to wait very long either. So <laughs> let's get started. Now, I'm going to tell you that this is an insecure system because when you're logging in, you're not actually logging into Windows per se. You're just logging into the network piece. You can actually press escape right here and just skip all this, but you'll have to log in if you try to get to any network resources, you know, drives, printers, that kind of stuff. So press, I put in my login password and here's my network. Um, just letting you know, um, as we get started here, in Windows 3.1, um, Windows for Workgroups, um, and Windows 3.1, it's going to always look like this. And this is kind of a beginner's guide to both types. So in any version of Windows 3.x, you're going to have this interface called the Program Manager Interface. This is where all of your, these little guys here, 
called program groups are stored, and those are where your programs are stored. So say if I want to get on the internet, I double click on the internet, and as you can see, I have MIRC, Opera 3.62, my FTP client, and AOL Instant Messenger. If we double click on PKWare, I've got, you know, some PKZip, you know, I've got Netscape Communicator on here because I like to dabble with the old browsers. Um, before we begin, why would someone want to run Windows 3.1? Well, the easiest answer would be actually games because there were a lot of wonderful games made for it, including even some real classics like the um, one you guys might even recognize would be the classic Solitaire if I can find it on here. Um, I have, you know, I have like we scroll around. Um, here's one that's popular. You've probably seen LGR play this, Ski Free, where you play the little ski man that runs against the abominable snowman. You can, like jump and run around and you have a little timer up there and you want to go as far as you can go. Yeah, Not the greatest thing I've ever seen, but ooh, oof da. Oh, hit the rocks. There's that, <laughs> another skier. Usually knowing the uh, abominable snowman's about to show up because the uh, landscape gets more ominous and you see less trees and stuff. I'm not very good at this game, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, this is kind of like the uh, classic Windows 3.1 game that everybody talks about is Ski Free. <laughs> Boom. So... That's one of the things is gaming, of course. You have Ski Free. Um, so there's plenty of games made for it. Little trinket games like that. You know, Solitaire and Pipe Dream and Chess and Checkers and Yahtzee. You know, those kinds of games. Um, that's most often what people would use Windows 3.1 for. Uh, Chips Challenge, Jazz, Jazz Ball, that kind of stuff. Windows 3.1 can be used for a lot of other things, too. Um, networking is one of them. Uh, it's a lot easier than other ways, but I must warn you that um, it doesn't really work with Windows 10 or any modern operating system properly. It'll work with Linux, but you have to edit. Um, if you know Linux, you'd have to edit your smb.conf file and have the uh, service message block or server message block package installed, and you'd have to have it set up to allow server message block 1.0 messages, which now are blocked because they're considered insecure. Um, let's see if we can access anything on my network here, um, from here. So to access network resources, or at least, uh, file shares on here, what you do is you go through, um, you'd have to go to main. Main is your program group where you have print manager, file manager, your old school control panel. I'd say before we go do any networking, let's talk a bit about, uh, some of the classic windows, uh, structure. Excuse me, that was a little bit of something caught in my throat. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's jiggle this a little bit and make it look nicer for everyone. There we go, that's much sharper. Okay, so in Windows 3.1, um, if you're wanting to... Um, so in Windows 3.1 as a basic user, or Windows for work groups after you've logged in or not logged in, let's talk about this. So file here is how you exit Windows. Um, when you exit Windows in this, there is no shutdown. You exit to DOS, and then you turn the computer off once you're at the DOS prompt. That's how you handle Windows 3.1 machine. Of course, we have the good old run command here. I can run, you know, notepad.exe from here. Here it is. We're in the old school version of notepad. It's got some serious limitations, so don't open large files. You can also access this menu by hitting Alt, and then it'll highlight, or you can hit Alt F and make the drop down appear. You can delete program groups. You can look up properties on it, uh, like that's the broader bun home products group properties. You can go over to options. Uh, you have options like auto arrange, minimize on use, which basically minimizes the whole program manager when you have a program running. Save settings on exit, which saves your desktop configuration as it was. Over here is the way you navigate Windows without a mouse. This was designed in a time when not every PC user had a mouse on their computer. So you used this menu to enter your program group. Say maybe I wanted to go uh, to After Dark here, which I have the After Dark screensaver. I'll explain that later. Um, 
So that's your window for program groups and stuff like that. And then here's your help file. And of course you can uh, see your version here. Um, it says Windows for groups version 3.11 copyright 1985, 1993 Microsoft Corporation. So this product, uh, yeah, this is the perfect time to do this because Windows 3.11 turns um, um, 30 years old this year, along with my truck. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Windows Four Groups 3.11 turns 30 in 2023, so we're on a 30-year-old operating system, and it's still surprisingly usable. How about that? Mm. So, um, of course, there was no licensing and stuff back then, or no mandatory numbers, because most computers weren't connected to the internet, at least not full-time, usually dialed up via modem. So this is a bit of a bizarre environment. This is more like a modern install of 3.11 if you were to use it today. Um, I have um, 109 kilobytes of base memory free, 62% system resources free. Not that great, but um, not that bad either. We go to main. And now we're gonna talk about the program groups. So the basic ones you usually get are uh, accessories, which has, you know, write, paintbrush, terminal, notepad, recorder, card file, and we'll, we'll explain all these programs in a little bit. And then you have, uh, no, that's my Maxis directory for all my SimCity games. Um, you have accessories, you have main, which has, you know, your control panel, file manager, print manager, your setup from within Windows, excuse me, from within Windows, a write file for README, the MS-DOS prompt, which you can run full screen or windowed just like in Windows 95 or anywhere else. You can exit by typing exit. And a program information file editor called PIF editor. We'll talk about that later. Um, PC Anywhere, Internet, uh, DOS applications gets auto-populated. As you can see, it found Harvard Graphics, WordPerfect, and GW Basic, because I actually play basic games on this computer too. Um, Win32 applications, there's an extension called Win32S that will allow some Windows NT and Windows, 32-bit uh, window, Windows programs, basically. Anything from, certain programs from Windows 9X also work too, but it was mainly designed to allow uh, Windows NT programs to work. Um, you have uh, WinG over here. Here's the uh, TCP IP stack utilities, like an FTP client and Telnet. So I can tell net into another machine or a bulletin board system. Uh, network over here, we have the network setup, network mail, schedule plus. We'll explain that piece when I talk more about networks. Games, which normally just comes on this version of Windows, it normally just comes with uh, Solitaire. And uh, what was the other one called? Can't believe I can't remember it. Solitaire and Bot Minesweeper, yeah. And then um, Startup, this is your startup group, which I have one megabyte for it. This is a special program I use. Uh, Windows 3.1X has terrible memory management and some memory leaks that make it run like crap. This keeps it from crashing. That's why I have an install that's about, I don't know, six years old, and I've never had to reinstall uh, it. Um, and then uh, I don't think there's anything else here that's uh, standard. Everything else that you're seeing here is stuff I've added. I think you can have a maximum of about 40 program groups, although why the heck you'd even want or need that many on a uh, system this old, I don't know. Um, I already pretty much stopped when this entire window is full. And this already has a lot. I think we're looking at 18, 19, 20, 20 22 program groups here. Oh yeah, I'm drinking sparkling water while I do this to keep my throat wet. <clears throat> now, for a brief check, because I'm doing a run of videos while I'm uh, on call. That's a good way to stay paying attention to things. Um, anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about some of the accessories in Windows 3.1. So you have Windows Write. This is just a basic word processor, you know a word processor for Windows or work groups. And you can do all the basic things with it. You can uh, edit and you can, uh, you know, insert objects like pictures and media clips and stuff. 
this was right when multimedia, you can make your fonts bold. You can uh, change your font type. Like uh, maybe say you go to fonts here. Maybe I want to use a uh, courier or courier new, which is a true type font. This was right when that stuff was appearing. This was right when all this modern day stuff was just starting to appear on computers. I mean, you, this was this is like the genesis. And of course, you can save files. It stores them in WRI format. Keep in mind, this is completely different from Microsoft Word, which is a completely different animal. And you can get Microsoft Word for Windows 3.1x. Here's Paintbrush. Looks tremendously different. That's because they were still using the old ZSoft Paintbrush interface. Microsoft bought ZSoft Paintbrush out in I think like 86 or 87 and then that this became their new paintbrush app in Windows 3.0 and it stayed that way until 95 when they made the new version that everybody else seems to be nostalgic for. I'm nostalgic for this one because this is what I grew up with. In my school of course because we didn't have a computer at home back then. And as you can see um, you know it's not that much different you have you know your cut and paste, you have your uh, spray can, you know, right here. You have your uh, erasers, you have your uh, flood, you have your pen, you have your uh, flood fill, you can flood fill in different colors. You can draw squares, you can draw filled squares, you can change your uh, line size to something different and draw something else, you know. And yeah, I'm actually a pretty good drawer on a mouse. We might do a, a Joy of PC Painting episode where I paint a picture in graphics too. And we talk about that. But we'll talk about graphics too later. Okay, Terminal. Terminal program. This was an old school program that you used to use for uh, dialing up on a server. So it'd be like AT. You could uh, do this. This was for use with your modem. So you dial your modem and dial your phone. Since I don't have a modem, this is completely useless. That was one way you dialed up into a bulletin board system back in the day was using the terminal app. Um, notepad, of course, I already showed you. That's just the notepad application, just a regular old text editor. Recorder. Now, this is an application most people would not understand today. They would see this and go, ooh, I can record videos on my 386? Like, no, you can't, not without special hardware at least. So recorder is what we call a macro recorder. And what it does is it records a sequence of key presses and mouse clicks. It's kind of like a program that I use at work nowadays called Auto Hotkeys. And what it does is it basically records a macro or key sequence in Windows to make things more convenient to use. This is one of the features nobody's demonstrated. I don't even entirely understand how to use it yet because I've never had to because I'm just quick with a keyboard and mouse, so I never really cared. But it can be a really useful feature, and it was especially useful in offices, which is what Windows was originally designed for, was so then your average person who never used a computer before could, uh, you know, work in an office. Um, the next one up here is card file. What is card file, you ask? Well, have you ever seen a thing called a Rolodex? It was this thing, little wire thing with wheels on the side, and it had little index cards in it, and you'd see, like, uh, the admin of an office back in the day, and they'd roll it around to find people's phone numbers and contact info. That's what this is. So you have, you know... So you have John Doe... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so maybe you put that and then there's no And then, you know, that that's what Notepad, this is what card file was used for. But what made it nice was you could actually save multiple card files. So maybe you needed a card, maybe you worked at a uh, dentist's office or a hospital and you needed, you know, to have a separate card file for your patients and a separate one for your vendors and a separate one for the people who actually keep the place working, you know, that kind of thing. That's what that card file program was used for. 
Icon Editor is something that didn't come with it. Neither did Acrobat. You had to download this. Yes, we had Adobe Acrobat PDF files in the early 1990s. Believe it or not, they were already here, even before the inter before the mainstream uh, World Wide Web was popular. Calculator, as you can see, this is pretty feature filled for a calculator. Um, that's because you could do just like you can do today. It's not even that different. It's uh, just a calculator, you know. You know, 25. You could do that. You could do your math. You could do your taxes. You could do scientific calculations with science mode here. I mean, you know, it, Windows 3.1 really gets a lot of... Uh, people really like to pee on it a lot. I don't understand why. I, I actually quite like it, even. Here's the clock. This was what you had instead of a little clock down here. But if you really wanted it badly enough, you could just do that. Yeah, even it, my version's actually updated, so it's Y2K compliant, so it knows it's 2023. If Windows 3.1 could speak in my house, it would probably be going, why am I still here? I'm like 200 years old in computer years. <laughs> yeah, object packager. Um, this is a way that you could package icons into an executable. This is kind of how you, uh, Im you know, this is kind of how you made dynamic link libraries and stuff like that. Like there was a file called moreicons.dll that you could actually go into in here. It contained more icons for your programs in case you needed more different icons for your programs. Here's one nobody talks about anymore and I still use to this day even in Windows 11. Character map. This allowed you to use all those nice little terminal ASCII characters and make all those pretty little menus and stuff. I actually use this for DOSBox, believe it or not. I use it to actually make uh, fake BIOS boot screens for my DOSBox installs. <laughs> so it looks like I'm actually on an old computer. Um, I don't use that for this. This is a real 486. You saw the post, so, you know. Media player. This is the original Windows media player. I don't know if we have any media to actually play. Um... It'll do bitmap files and other stuff. It can open bitmap files and AVI files. Let's see if there's a like a M MPEG wave file or something like that. MPEG wave. We we'll play a .dat file. We could try that. We we'll try Windows AVI files here. I mean, you see, it actually has quite a lot of different files it can play. Um, MPEG CDI movies. Cannot read drive G. Cancel, cancel. Yeah. So this this was used for playing, you know, WAV files, AVI files. But we had Media Player back then. And back in those days, we called it um, multimedia. That's what we called these PCs that have sound cards and Super VGA cards, such as this 486. We called them multimedia PCs. Right here we have sound recorder. Um, I can plug in a microphone or a guitar to my computer and record just a single track mono, 8-bit sound file, and I could add echo and reverse and do all that fun stuff and mix it with other files though it never actually worked. So, or at least it wouldn't work for music applications. So that's your after dark, that's your uh, main accessories. Now let's talk about main. This is where you do stuff. So print manager is where you handle all your printers, which as you can see, I don't have any printers. I could go on here. As you can see, we can only find one computer on the network. Um, this one doesn't have any printers on my network, and I'm sure my uh, Canon printer probably won't connect. So here we go. Then you had file manager, and this was how you um, manage files on Windows 3.11. Looks for work groups. Looks way different, and uh, 3.11 just had some basic stuff. I don't even think it had this whole tree up here, but on this, you could actually um, connect to a network drive um, on here. So you could go in here, you could get on here. I don't have any uh, shares on there. Um, we could try and maybe go to RetroPie from here. Let's see if it actually connects. It says a selected service cannot, server cannot be found on the network. So you could connect to a file share on here. I don't have anything else to share files from that's server message block 1.0. Then you 
Then you had your control panel. Uh, you can control your color scheme. You know, you had like the Windows Default and Arizona and black leather jacket and Bordeaux and cinnamon and designer, Emerald City. Oh yeah, hot dog stand, the uh, famous hot dog stand scheme that I don't know why anybody would use it. I always called it Lego Shell Station, yeah, honestly. Oh yeah, and you could uh, make your own custom color scheme if you wanted to. You just uh, click on an element, you go to color palette, you could choose your colors. Um, I'm in 16-bit uh, uh, high color mode, so you can see I have a nice elaborate palette. This is where you installed fonts and used fonts, and you could see what they look like. As you can see, I have a few custom fonts, like Akin, which is actually kind of the Bigfoot font, and you know, Courier New. If you wanted to like emulate the Loverboy font, Wingdings, Times Roman, you know, you have true type fonts and regular fonts. It was pretty, uh, pretty wild back in those days. Ports, this has to do with your COM ports, so you can change the baud rate or whatever of your serial ports. I'm not going to mess with that. Mouse, um, it'll show you which button's being pressed. You can see I'm clicking left or right. Um, you can also swap the left-right buttons. You can test your double-click speed here. Um, you can change it. Um, yeah, this is really driving me crazy a little bit at the moment because of this uh, collector. So you could do your mouse settings there. This is where you change your desktop wallpaper. So I've got like purple block. I've got a ton of them on here that didn't come with it. Um, some of the better known ones were like marble and um, marble. And I think there was a zigzag was the one I used to use a lot with leather jacket. Um, I used to make my own schemes mostly because I kind of find the ones on here kind of basic. They were designed to look really good on a basic non-sound card, non-multimedia, VGA PCs, and they could deploy this at work, and people weren't putting pictures of their dogs and stuff on their desktop back in, like, 1991, imagining that they're even capable of doing that back then. Whatever guy's driving IT nuts. You change the blink speed up and down for the cursor, all sorts of seemingly... Uh, trivial things. Mm -hmm. Keyboard, you can change your keyboard speed, delay before fast repeat, you can test, you know, like press and hold a key. I actually like mine a little shorter, so let's change that. Um, yeah, that's about how I like it. I like most of my stuff set pretty quick on my old computers. Printers, you could add printers, you could find printers on the network. International, this allowed you to change your uh, date and time formats and currency format and change your keyboard layout and everything else. Um, date time, this allows you to set the date and time on your computer, which right now is uh, 10. Yeah, it's all synced up because we ran a free DOS earlier with a SMTP, your server on it. Yeah, we've got the NTP server. Here's our network. So we double click on that, as you can see we have, um, I'm on the Creeping Network group, Creeping Net 486. Um, my comment would probably be something I would change there. Um, we have my log on, log off, we have startup, password, event log. You can look at the event logs and see what's in there. I can enable it or disable it. I don't really keep logs on these old machines because there's just no point. If something blows up really bad, I just rebuild it. It just doesn't really matter because it's that little bit of work. Just to let you know a difference between now and then, Windows 3.1 came on six floppy disks. Windows for work groups came on eight. That's about eight, roughly about nine or ten megabytes worth of data there. That's hardly anything. The whole install process takes maybe about 25, 30 minutes max if you have a really old slow machine like a uh, 386SX with like one megabyte of memory or a 286 in the case of 3.1 with like um, 640K. <laughs> if it'll even run on that. Sound mapper, this deals with all your sound stuff. So if you have a sound card like I do, as you can see, it's directed to my uh, AUS64 wave out on here, which is my sound card. 
MIDI mapper. This is like your MIDI synthesizer. You can edit it. As you can see, uh, it's all the instruments and stuff. You could create your own MIDI mappers and your own stuff for it. Um, all bass and all that stuff. 386 enhanced mode. This is a, what was introduced with Windows 386, which was a version of Windows 2. Um, as you can see, I can uh, do idling for the serial ports. I can set scheduling of uh, the Windows uh, foreground and background events and control my virtual memory, which is a big part of it. Virtual memory typically is memory stored on the hard drive. I can set things to 32-bit, like right here, as you can see, I'm using 32-bit file access with 32-bit disk access because my driver allows that. You have to have a driver for this for it to work. And this is one little reason why I'm not very big on using Windows 3.1 on anything that uses a FAT32 partition. It can work. There's a file called Win3x Start that you can download and you can run it on like DOS 7 on a FAT32 environment and it'll allow it to work. But you run into two problems. One, the hard drives and the hard drive controllers that are came afterward don't have drivers for 3.1 because they were trying to push everybody into 95 and later. And two, um, you can't, you can't down, you, you, you know. This was like a prime setup for 1994. I have the Western Digital chip driver, I have a huger hard drive, but the huger hard drive knows how to make use of that Western Digital chip driver, as you probably saw when I was booting up. So it's not really a big deal here. And I gave myself about 64 megabytes of uh, size for my swap file because I have a tremendous hard drive on this thing, and I can get away with that. So I, I, this system's pretty stable, um, and we're not going to mess with those. You want to be careful messing with this category here because it'll mess you up. Here's drivers. This just gives you a list of all the drivers installed for Windows. You can see we have the After Dark password driver that allows me to password protect Windows via the After Dark screensaver. We have my music synthesizer. We have various music codecs and decoders. We have a lot of that on here because I'm a musician and I screw around with this stuff. It's kind of amazing. It seems like musicians almost took up to Windows 3.1 as much as a Mac. We have fax right here. So you can do uh, Microsoft at work fax. You can do that. I'm guessing it's kind of like an early version of write fax or something like that, you know? And then here's your sound. You can uh, change your sound files for whatever you're doing. Um, you know, <laughs> you see they're all like 8-bit sound files. New email, outgoing call, ring out. You have Windows exit. The classic uh, question. That's usually the sounds you usually hear out of 3.1. So that gives you a good idea of control panel. Clipbook viewer allows you to see things that you stored to your clipboard because it can store multiple items to the clipboard. I think there's a way to connect to the network and actually share your clipboard with other computers on the network, which is kind of neat. <laughs> Only you get that with 3.11. Of course, you got the MS DOS prompt here, so you can do all your DOS stuff from within Windows. You know, I can go back there and look at all my games. Monkey 2. You know, <laughs> I'm freaking out my card. It's Windows Setup. In Windows Setup, you only really had four options to change from. You had your video card here, which I have an S3805 with two megs of VRAM and 64,000 colors mode 800 by 600 because I have two megabytes of VRAM, Microsoft uh, dub bar mouse, Microsoft network, and the keyboard. There's really not much to mess with there. P PIF editor. This is what you use to uh, set up a program, particularly, and mostly was aimed towards programs in DOS. And what the program information file was it allowed you to do things like set up how much video memory to use, how much, uh, what kind of video memory, how much EMS, how much XMS, whether you're at full screen or windowed, background or exclusive. We might play with this in another video. I mean, it could be fun to mess around with. Could also corrupt all my files and piss me off too. And of course, like anything back in those days, you have a right, Windows write file that tells you all about the operating system, which if you were a smart person, you'd actually RTFM and read this thing. <sighs> 
And it tells you all about using the operating system in here. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, you're making a video on this, so why the heck do you need the video? Because most people don't read documentation for computers. They just don't. They never do. You can send them an email. You can send them, uh, you can write a 10-page document, and they don't want to see it. So I'm going to kind of give you my realistic first-person view, first-person's perspective of this stuff. I'm not being mean or anything. I'm just pointing it out a little bit that, you know, people generally don't pay attention unless they really, really desperately need or want something. So I make these videos really, really long and really, really elaborate. So then you can stop and pause and take notes and do what you need to do, you know? It's also why I write on a website. Some people like me like to read. Uh, a rare skill these days. Um, let's look around here. Of course, you have network. So you have like a mail program. This is not email. This is a network mail program that was only for Windows 3.1. Work Can for your computers. wife sneak in for a kiss? All right, now we're back. Um, <laughs> I had to stop for a minute. Been doing a long run of recording tonight in between on call calls. Anyway, we're going to talk about uh, the network side again as we were talking about Windows Mail. This is not email. It was a proprietary mail program made just for Windows for work groups, particularly for doing uh, email and work groups in Windows. So. You know, this is what you got. You connect to an existing post office or create a new work group's post office. I'm not going to go through that here. That's outside the scope of this video. Excuse me. Video. Here's Schedule Plus. This was like a version of Task Scheduler. It seems like. No, actually it had to do with your mail. Remote access. Um, this would allow you to uh, remotely access your uh, computer on a network. This is like an early version of RDP. I'm going to press install. I haven't done that on this yet. Could be fun, you know? We could uh, try it out on something else. Install your computer. All right. It calls for enhanced mode protocol. If you want to replace all later files with the versions you're installing now, press yes or press no to all. I would play, say, um, Press no. Go on MS abort. We're just gonna abort for right now. This is how you log in and log off. Um, you log off, you can log on. Um, you have a short password, not very good security in this OS and I don't use your environment, so I don't really use it very much anyway. Especially not anymore. Um, net wallpaper or net watcher. Uh, I can look at connections from other computers to this one, if there were any, wind pop-up. Maybe later this year we'll get a network going where I can actually talk to this computer, but uh, otherwise, I'm not going to. Wind pop-up is kind of like an instant message program for um, your network, so you can tell people. I have a feeling this was originally developed for uh, systems admins and network admins for broadcasting network-wide messages to um, the machines. To say, oh yeah, we're about to do some scheduled maintenance so the network's going to be down or you need to shut down right now or otherwise you are going to lose data or something like that. Nowadays we have a version of that called Microsoft Teams. <laughs> then we have Wind Meter, Settings, um, Show Legend, 5 second intervals, Let's see what that looks like. Um, see application color server color about wind meter nothing really going on this computer isn't on there oh yeah and this was more like an instant messaging program you could talk to other people so this is like Microsoft Teams maybe the other ones more like a messaging system for service since so networking um, let's look here startup I added one megabyte for it I don't really have a lot of stuff in my startup Anyway, that's kind of an introduction to Windows for Groups 3.11. Um, you can create new program groups and program items by going up here and doing new, and then a program group, and then a program item. Um, you can run programs within Windows from DOS, and I'll talk just a little bit about screensavers and why you should use them and why you shouldn't use them. 
Um, so screen, so the invention of the screensaver goes back to the cathode ray tube monitor, which this computer has. Right now we're looking at a 15-inch Micron SVGA CRT monitor from around 99-2000. Digital controls, the whole nine yards. CRT monitors work by taking a very low, low, low current high voltage, around 25,000 volts, and applying it to a giant capacitor slash vacuum tube called a picture tube. And that picture tube has several electron guns that sweep back and forth at various speeds called horizontal sync and vertical sync. And what it does is it draws the picture on the screen by going really fast back and forth really, really fast. If you have a static image like this Windows desktop here, no screen saver, um, what happens is that that Elect series of electron guns, or electron gun in the case of monochrome monitors, just keeps sweeping the same pattern over the, uh, the uh, phosphor coating on the inside of the picture tube. And what it does is it burns that image into the screen. And that's something you can't fix. Um, if you're into old video games like me, if you've ever seen like a really old arcade machine when it's off, like an old Pac-Man or a Donkey Kong or something, You'll see the play field all like etched into the screen even though it's off and unplugged. It's not creepy, that's called screen burning and that's the reason why, you're, uh, why the screensaver was invented and that's even why your Atari 2600 would change colors on screen when in between game rounds to keep it from having a static image that would burn in on your screen. Same deal. So if you have an old cathode ray tube monitor like I do, having a screensaver is actually a good idea, especially on a system like this that I leave up sometimes running for 24-7, 24-7 sometimes. Um, so that's one thing we're going to kind of talk about. Um, Windows comes with its own screensavers, such as um, Starfield Simulation, Flying Windows... Um, it's got, you know, it's got one called Marquee where you can type a message and it'll play it like out to lunch, we'll be back at 1.30 or whatever. Useful stuff for work. But then there was a package called After Dark and you could buy that and it had all these really cool screen savers that you could uh, use on it. Um, like, uh, let's see here. If you want to demo, this one's one of them. It just sort of draws patterns really quickly on screen. We can demo another one here. You see it starts uh, slicing around the desktop like that first puzzle from the seventh guest. <laughs> um, this one takes chunks of the screen away as, you know, circles. We can randomize it again. This one uh, has a little, um, hmm, little uh, dog character that just... Yeah, you have a little dog that just walks out on your screen and starts running around and doing stuff. And some of them even have sound. So you can go in there and uh, actually play sounds on there with some of these. Um, on off setup, you can do general, you can do sounds. Um, here's another one, kind of like the Dazzle screensaver for DOS. Oh, I think it looks a little more holy. Here's one with the swans that swim around your uh, computer screen. You know, there's just all kinds of cool stuff you could get. You could actually get modules for this. Here's one that just throws a bunch of colored balls all over your screen. Like I dumped out all the ball bearings from my bicycle hub all over the ground. <laughs> Here's a searchlight one. There's some pretty elaborate ones. 3D simulation. You can tell my video card is like buff due to all the stuff that this can do. Here's a guy with a lawnmower. He just runs all over your screen and mows your program manager and everything else while the lawn starts growing back wherever the heck you just happen to be. You can stop it. So I'm just kind of giving you an idea of some of them. Here's a game show one that's actually kind of interactive. Some of these are interactive. You can like answer questions and stuff. So this, there's some cool stuff here that can be done with 3.1. Anyway, hopefully that will, uh, hopefully that kind of enlightens you onto Windows 3.1. The next thing we'll probably talk about is surfing the internet in Windows 3.1 um, in another video. And you exit out of Windows by clicking File, Exit, and then this one in your Windows section, and here you go. 
And then you're back out to DOS. Um, and it takes a couple moments, there we are, back at DOS. And that's a bit of an introductory video to Windows 3.1 and what some of the applications did and do and what you can do with it. Uh, I hope you, really, you liked it. Anyway, this is CreepingNet signing out. I'll see you in the next video.